All right. Um, today I'm going to be presenting about you no know, theater, uh, a Japanese uh, theater. And uh, no is a stylistic form of musical dance drama featuring elaborate, elaborate masks, uh, narration, and one of the main differences it has uh, then between Kabuki and No is that No, the performer wear masks and in, in Kabuki actors cover their face in paint and, and, and white makeup. No is, is regarded as beautiful, but, but it's also regarded as more boring than forms such as Kabuki because it, it's, it's more methodical. The, the actions ca uh, characters make are, are sort of, everything has a purpose, but that in a way presents a sense of boringness as it's, it means slower movements uh, and, and more methodical movements as well. Uh, no and its sister art form, Kyogen, are two of Japan's four forms of classical theater, the other two being Kabuki and Buraku. No, which is in its broadest sense includes the, the, the comic theater Kyogen, which is sort of interspersed throughout the play, um, developed as a distinctive theater form in the 14th century, making it the oldest extent professional theater in the world. And so to go into more detail on this, um, once again, No is, is one of the world's most, one of the world's oldest continually performed types of theater and the oldest of Japan's traditional performing arts. It has its roots in mime and acrobatics of San Rep, 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 sorry, uh, literally monkey music. A form of dance drama associated with agriculture from early Heian period, which is 17, 794 to 1185, and has some of, some links to, to China as well of people coming over and bringing their their theater forms and their their uh, entertainment across. Uh, in its early days, performers came from the lower classes and usually served the upper class or the the shogunate in general. And some scholars suggest that, that No actually developed out of Gigaku, a form of comical silent drama where the actor wears different masks and there's, there's musical accompaniment from percussion and flute. In uh, 752, a magnificent ceremony was held to concentrate the, the new Buddha statue in, in Nara. Uh, and a Gigaku play was also performed. Uh, a 7th century Gigaku mask in Shosho in collection depicts uh, a ruddy faced foreign king who leads a group of drunken men. It's uh, thought to have originated in the Wu Kingdom of ancient China and was introduced to Japan by the. Uh, I, uh, forgive me on my, my pronunciations. It, it's, it, they are reasonably difficult to pronounce. Uh, the Pei Kingdom on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, and Noah was performed at the Kofukuji Temple in Nara in AD 869 during the Buddhist Shuni ceremonies to pray for national prosperity. Um, the Ishimori. It, it was also seen as as a way for the, the religious leaders in Japan at the time to get messages across to the people as well. And I think that that was one of the major reasons it was, it was brought up and regarded so highly in Japanese society because the, the Buddhist priests could, could essentially preach to the, to the lower class and to, to get them to believe the things that they were saying. Um, and, and it was traditionally performed in Buddhist temples and the use of masks and frequent appearances of ghosts is based on the fact that, that no originated in a time of war of Japan. It, in, the, in a time when, when small clans were fighting each other in order to, to sort of to figure out who was going to be in charge, to figure out who the next shogunate would be. Um, and then for the later history of, of no theater, not just way back in the 1300s, uh, before that, no settled into its present, around, the present form around the 14th century. So it, it really hasn't changed in that amount of time either. In the mid-14th century, No was dominated by humorous and entertaining plays known as Sur Sarugaku and Sang Sangaku. Um, the, the pioneers of No form were the playwright Kanami and his son Zimi. Uh, the first No performance was when 12-year-old Zimi and Kanami danced Sang Sang Sarugaku in front of the 18-year-old shogun, Akira Yoshimitu, in 1374. Um, According to Japan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, in the early 14th century, acting troops in a variety of centuries old theater traditions were touring and performing at temples, shrines, and festivals, often with, with patronage to the nobility. So it was, it was often a way for the lower class to, to, to sort of move into the, to the middle, middle roles, or, or even higher, by gaining favor of the, the, the nobles and the royals in the, in the shogunate. Um, 
and it became the, the official art form of the, the samurai class, enjoyed by the famous uh, Japanese uh, historical figures such as Oda Nobunaga and Toyu Motu Hideyoshi after the fall of Muromachi Shogunate. No received extensive patronage from, from the military leader Toyo Tomi Hideyoshi, and in the 17th century, no became an official property of the Tokugawa shogun. So, it, 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 while, while existing for, through the 13th century and 14th century and further, it, it wasn't really solid in Japanese society until, until the, the 17th century when, when it was made uh, an official property of the, the shogun. Um, with the fall of the, the shogunate, uh, no in the Meiji period, eight, which is 1868 through 1912, was kept alive by the dedication of performers uh, such as Umeke Wa Min, Minru, Minoru um, and by the patronage of the nobility. Since the end of the World War II, no has to depend entirely on public for its survival. It, it's no longer, obviously, it's no longer the, the, the lower class looking to, to pertain the upper class, but it's it's more about, it's, it's similar to, to other to, to, to why people produce theater now in, a, in the Western world as well, because it, it does rely heavily on on public coming to it, and that's 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 a lot of the reason why the, the the plays were actually shortened since then, because people don't necessarily enjoy spending <laughs> eight hours of their day going to them, because it, it, that's that's no in its original form is four or five different scenes sort of, which would each last two hours with interspersed Kyogen farces. Um, now, how and why I physically uh, explored this sort of section of it was I, I, I began uh, and set up the summer to, to read um, a book about no theater. And I, I, I took it up with me and I, uh, to Alaska and spent the time reading about no and, and reflecting on, on what that meant and how I, I would portray it. And I realized that that there's a, there's, there were a few forms that, that I wanted to, to go into specific um, detail in, which, which eventually led to my conclusion of, of my specific theater uh, convention, which would be the, the, the use of masks and the archetype of the, the mask portrayed. Um, it, it would, for me, at least, it would be the, the han, Hanya, which is the, the, the demon or, or evil spirit in the play that was, that was once a woman and is transformed into this, this sort of this, this very sad monster that, that, that sort of sets to, to, to be the, the protagonist, or, or sorry, the, the antagonist to the protagonist in the, in the story. Um, for, uh, I, I then sort of moved to more, more broader sources uh, on, on the internet, um, so on and so forth, just sort of websites from, from scholars and professors of, of uh, and as well as the Japanese arts ministry because they keep very clear and documented source, sources for, for no theater, as it is so old, and, and they want to keep this tradition alive, you can really tell that. Um, and for me, it was really about watching, watching other people become this han han hanya, and, and see the, the way they act, and the way the mask portrays the, the emotion of the character. And I had to, for me, it was, it was sort of putting a video in front of me that would, that would portray the Hanya, and then doing my best to follow along with that, to, to, to mimic, to, to, to try those slow methodical movements that would, that would get me to, to, to where I need to be for the, the final performance and, and in this research presentation. And what I, I really found interesting about that was the fact that the, you watch the, the movements and it's, it, even though the, the, the character is moving, the actor is very, moving very quickly. You could tell that, that, that hours went into to putting together this 15 second, 20 second piece of this, this character moving from one place to another because the, everywhere that, that her hand moves, for example, was where it is intentionally meant to go. Everywhere her foot is placed, it is intentionally meant to be placed. And, and it's sort of where a bit of, of, of limitations come in on my part because uh, I've got to, to, to get into this actor who spent their entire lives performing this thing, and that's sort of what I tried, I tried to be. Um, so, here we go. This is the, the example of the mask used to, to present the Hanya character, and it was often used to look straight 
face to face to somebody, and, and it would portray a sense of, of anger or, or or annoyance, sort of. It would, it would it would when looking straight at you, it would present a, it would create fear in the audience. Is what I'm trying to say. And when the the actor would look down at at, at his hands, he, you would see the the, the, the expression on the mask change because it was made so that, that when the face was tilted downwards it would, the face would look more as in a, in a state of despair or sadness. So although that, that is difficult to show, it's it's it, I can I can do my best to portray this through my actions. So thank you. about portraying the fact that that she the, the woman that is that is sort of become this demon is is in essence extremely angry and, and violent but but it, at the same time is also aware of her actions in a way she she also feels an extreme despair almost for for the things she has done in her past or the things that that eventually led to her death and, and becoming the actual demon. And when discussing the, the, the impact on me personally, I think it's it's when 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 acting and and warming up with the, with the theater group for for example, it, it's made me realize that that the individual mo movements I make and, and for example putting my arm here out beside me instead of putting it here makes a massive difference. The the body language is is, is critical, especially when, when someone else is putting the words in your mouth, like such as as in no theater with the narrator. The the body language becomes so much more valuable, and the, the actions you make. Um, but I think if, if I had to take something away, that that would be what I took away from this. And also the 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 meaning as well. And if and if uh, and. For the, if I had to connect this to, to, to one other theater uh, tradition in the past, it would be it would be uh, Victorian melodrama because I, I can see the, the link between between the 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 archetypes of the characters. I mean, you've got the shite, the hero, the Hanya, the, the evil spirit, or the the the, the antagonist to, to the main character. And, and you see that, and, and it's 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 eerily similar, and yet these things developed on on opposite ends of the on, on, of the earth. And I think when the the ideas of, of purposeful movement can also be put into into Victorian melodrama as well, because because oftentimes it's more focused on the words that are coming out of the the the, the, the characters' mouths in Victorian melodrama. You're, you're more focused about the writer and and the way he portrays the words, but critical part of, of portraying the words is the, the actual body language that that character is putting out. And and you can't honestly or, or realistically tell a, a very meaningful story without without someone relating to you 
almost fully. And, and with the body language, you're sort of able to do that. You're able to, to, to let people interpret your, your actions without actually using words. Thank you.